So regular followers will know that I built this anti-aircraft gun position, battery position uh, for the train set, for the model railway. Now, it's looking quite good, fairly busy, but there's one thing missing, isn't there? Soldiers. So we're going to address that. So I placed an order, went out and picked up from Hannant's Warehouse in Alton Broad today, uh, some little soldiers to fit. So 172 scale, so not exact scale, they're not 00176, but anyway, these are the sort of things I used to play with as a kid. So we've got a nice little selection. The ones I'm after are ones like that, where people are walking around, that sort of thing. So we're gonna paint these up. There's a few different ones to choose from. Okay, so these are the Airfix ones. I never had the British ones as a kid. I had Americans, I had the RAF, the Luftwaffe, the American Air Force ones. So that's quite a nice selection. I'll use about half of them. Also found these hats, World War II British tank riders. So these are infantry, but they're sitting around. So they can be sitting around in, in the anti-aircraft positions, right? So these look quite good. I wish they weren't holding their rifles. Sorry if I'm trembling a bit. Um, it's a bit shaky, but come on. So I've got to clear up. There's a bit of flash on those. They all need a bit of clearing up. And then, because these are a polythene rather than sort of polystyrene, they're a bit tricky to paint. That doesn't stick so well. So the advice is you put down some dilute uh, PVA glue and you soak them in that. And then when that dries, that gives you a coating you can then prime over and paint. So this is going to be something we do the next few days. Okay. Here we go. So I've put my watered down diluted PVA in there. Just drop them in. A nice little soak. Tap it off. Okay. And we're going to put them standing up on a draining board here. Hang on the left and then leave them to dry so i'm gonna leave them overnight probably won't spray them for 24 hours or so it's a bit thick there they're making some sort of membrane in the middle for the time being but we can blow through that a bit of waste This is important because they're flexible and they've got a weird kind of coating on them. But this, this should hopefully stop the paint from chipping and flaking off. We're just going to do that, leave them to drain and harden off overnight. There we go. So they're all racked up and starting to drip down. You can see there's quite a bit of PVA has already come off. So when PVA dries, that sinks as well. That shrinks, should I say. So that will be giving me a better coating than currently. So yeah, should have a good result. Here we go. All nicely dried, shrunk down and clear. There's a few little bits. This one's got like a bit sort of egg yolk type glaze in the holes there. We'll just blow that out. But we're ready for the priming stage. So here's my spray booth. It's just a big box with a small box underneath to give me a step. Just using a bit of car spray, car primer. So we're just gonna go from nice distance, give it a light dusting to prepare it ready for the enamel paints to stick to. Don't need too much, but you do wanna get good coverage. On both sides, as you can see, it's only a light dusting. You can tell because you can still see a little bit of the base material through it. Now that's got to dry properly before I get the airbrush out. Job done. All right, it's all dried off. Now I've got to paint. So I've mixed up my colour for the battle dress. And it's uh, it's my own mix because I didn't have the right one. So it's a mixture of uh, humble flesh colour and various green and light brown and it looks about right so it needs to be more brownish than greenish if that makes sense so uh yeah i'll load that into the airbrush so you go into that central reservoir there and then i'll start going at a lowest pressure 
Well, I've sprayed them up. They're nicely covered, but they've not dried the colour I expected. They look a bit greener, a bit darker. I've got a nice colour, so um, I'm not going to keep fiddling around. I'm going to go and buy another tin of paint. A different colour. I mean, those ones look okay, but they're, they're not the colour I want. Not quite. They just need to be a little bit lighter, a little bit browner. But the coverage is good. Yeah, they seem to be, seem to be pretty good, pretty okay. And the models themselves, they seem to be a fairly nice um, sculpting. Difficult to focus on them, isn't it? So, there we go. It's the first coat. <laughs> Something that's really bugging me is it's impossible to find out what colour paint I need to do British Battle Dress. I've gone out and bought four tins of Humbrol. Matt 226, 155, 29, 93. 93 is desert yellow. 29 is dark earth. 155 is olive drab. And 226 is interior green. Now they don't bear any resemblance to the stickers on top or in fact to the uh, <laughs> colors on the chart you know those two are completely different to each other as is the paint itself anyway I've had a look through and quite frankly looking at it having had a little swatch put on each one the closest appears to be matte 93 which is desert yellow so we're going to have a look I was uh, was googling and found Matt One Five Five. I'm sorry, it's nothing like a British battle dress one. That's further away from it than the one that I'd made myself, which doesn't look right. So we're going to give it a go with Matt Ninety Three and uh, see what it looks like. Here we go then. Paint is in and thin slightly, so ready to start blowing some over. So here we go. That looks pretty good. Well, it looks pretty much okay there. Of course, it's how it looks when it dries. Well, all dried off now, so let's have a little look. Colour is excellent. Good. So now I need to pick out the details, like faces, boots, rifles, equipment, and so on, with a small brush, but that's really good. And I've got some more sandbagged revetments to go on. I might green them up a little bit on the sandbag side. The sandbags aren't hessian coloured when the army have them. Yeah, looking good. That's for tomorrow. Well, the main bulk of the painting is done. Helmets, webbing, rifles, boots, uniforms. Some of them have got berets as well, so I've used six colours in total. Anyway, these are the ones I won't use. This is my big pile now that I've got to go through and touch up. Now, I think they look pretty good. The green on the webbing isn't right. But it's, um, it's a case of making something that does stand out a bit. Okay. So, so I'm pleased with it. Um, it's a bit of added contrast. Just give it some colour and pick out the details a bit more. The, uh, the helmets on, on a fair few of them have to be coloured in now. Some of the boots, bits of rifles have to be touched up. And... My um, my personal feeling is that that whole issue of dipping it in PVA so that it sticks better, ugh, I wouldn't bother next time. I don't think it's helped. I've had bits come off here and there. You can see a bit there. See that dark green plastic there? So, yeah, next time I'll just go straight with a primer and hope that that would work better. Because I don't think it would work any worse. So, yeah, there we have it. So next time you see them, they will be in situ.
Well, here we go. How's it all looking? So coming down to the tents, there's a few people scattered around. And down into the gun pits, look at that. Figures all in place, all in situ. I've got some rounds stacked up ready to fire. People sitting around the gun site. A person walking around. We've got the guards walking around and so on. Brilliant. Really pleased with this. Yeah. It's all looking really good. So it's brought a lot of life to that part, that section, the gun battery. That's really effective. Quite pleased with how the soldiers come out. They look good, don't they? There we go. So I'm getting over on the Bofors site. And of course, finally down here by the pillbox. Good, brought a lot of life to it. A lot of life. Really pleased. 